We're going to get started talking about differentiation with a simple function that only has a scalar input and a scalar output. That makes it easy to visualize. Our starting point for thinking about the derivative is to think about a secant line. A secant line of a curve is a line that intersects the curve in at least two places. Here, I'm showing such a line in blue. Let's give the first intersection point the label x0. Then, let's think about the secant line that we get by intersecting with another point delta x away. If we look at the resulting ratio of change in y to change in x, we get something called the difference quotient. When talking about derivatives, however, it's conventional to use h instead of delta x. The derivative at x0 is the limit of that difference quotient as the change in x goes to 0. The secant line becomes a tangent at the point x0, and its slope is the value of the derivative. Now let's look at a couple of examples to connect your sort of symbolic intuitions with the definition via this limit. Let's take the function x squared and write it out explicitly in terms of the limit. We expand it a little bit and see that the two x squared terms in the numerator cancel. After we cancel out the denominator, we're left with the limit of 2x plus h. Of course, the h goes away and we're left with just 2x, which is what we'd hope to find. A slightly more involved example is to look at the product rule of differentiation. As before, we write out the limit explicitly. Here we have to do a little bit of a trick though. We have to add and subtract the product of fx and g of x plus h. Then we can collect terms into two pieces, one with g of x plus h and the other with just f of x. Since we're assuming both of these functions are differentiable, we're also assuming they're continuous. And so the limit of the product is the product of the limits. The limit of g of x plus h is of course g of x, and we're able to reproduce the symbolic rule that we're used to. Now let's take a look at the chain rule. This is a much more involved derivation, but the chain rule is so fundamental to machine learning that I think it's worth taking a look. Why is it fundamental? Well, deep learning is entirely about function composition. Each layer of a deep neural network consumes the output of the previous layer. In order to train our machine learning model, we might need to compute the derivative with respect to a parameter that's appeared in a deep sequence of function compositions. This may mean, in effect, that we need to compute the chain rule over and over again in order to train our deep neural network. In fact, automating that process of applying the chain rule is a field unto itself called automatic differentiation. Backpropagation is a special case of that implemented by popular tools like TensorFlow and PyTorch. So it's worth understanding where the chain rule comes from. As usual, we'll start by writing the limit-based definition of the derivative. Already we can see this is going to be a little bit complicated because we're not seeing anything that looks exactly like a difference quotient for f or g. Nevertheless, since these functions are differentiable, we'd expect to be able to reason about their difference quotients. Let's write down a function epsilon of h that represents the gap between some finite difference quotient and the actual gradient at x. Due to the definition of the derivative, we would expect this to go to zero as h goes to zero. Now let's rearrange it into something that's a little bit more directly useful. Now we can substitute this into our limit-based definition of the derivative of a composition. Now let's do the same thing again, but for f. Let's take z to be an input to f and k to be a change in that input. As before, let's rearrange things to be a little bit more convenient. Now this is where things are gonna get a little bit tricky because what we're gonna do is look at the orange part of the second equation and find a way to write that in the form z plus k. z equals gx seems straightforward enough because that's where we're evaluating the function. k here is now a function of h and it reflects the change in the input to f as a function of the change in the input to g. We plug those in and we get a big complicated expression. We see some opportunities to simplify though and immediately we can remove the f of g of x minus f of g of x. Once we've done that, we notice that we have h on both the top and the bottom. Simplifying, we get to the limit of a product. Let's break that into the product of two limits. Now we convinced ourselves before that epsilon of h goes to zero as h goes to zero, so the term on the left just becomes g prime of x. By the same argument, eta of k of h goes to zero as h goes to zero, and the right-hand side becomes f prime of g of x. And when those go away, we're left with the form of the chain rule that we're used to.